Hey, Rachel Darlin, what are you doing? Planting these bok choy. All right. I, I may have planted too many bok choy. Can you have too many bok choy? <laughs> Is that possible? I'm not Look, sure. I like bok choy. Yeah, it's good. And it's a vegetable. And it's, it's a vegetable. Good. Yeah, and it's expensive if you were to buy it. So. And look at all that laundry hanging on the line behind you. Yeah. Um, I know, you don't like that in a YouTube show. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll switch. <laughs> all right. So we're going to be planting bok choy in between the yeah. basils. These basils like... really don't seem to like all the rain. You know, I was going to ask you what you thought. They have all browned around the edges, unlike most of the other plants in the garden. I'm not exactly sure why that's the case. Okay. I certainly don't know. If you don't know, I don't know. That is a coccinia grandis right there, the perennial cucumber I planted at the corner. So it can do the same thing that this one is doing and take over that whole side of the garden. I've got to pick these again. Look at all these. There's tons of them. I also have to uh, free up. I stuck a little post here alongside this air potato. This, I think it's a Dioscoria bulbifera edible air potato right here. I stuck a uh, little stick here and it was originally supposed to go up and climb on this fence, but the cucumbers have eaten the fence and I, I like how productive the cucumbers are on the fence. I mean, look at all these cucumbers. Just cucumbers, 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 cucumbers everywhere. Uh, so I, I don't really want to take it away from here. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is get a long stick and send it straight up top here to this section, just like its brother is doing, which is the other variety of Dioscoria bulbifera with the edible bulbils. And that one is doing really great because it actually beat uh, the cucumbers. Before the cucumbers ate this, it was already well on its way up here. I'm very excited about these two, but I gotta make sure that this one, which is the only one we have and maybe is the only one we can ever find, uh, has the space that it needs to run. So I'm gonna do that. These are so beautiful. Yeah. Can you get over here so that I can show yes. people something that I was thinking about earlier? Sure, just a second. I would like to show you all, I've been thinking about this, how to properly use a trowel in case you don't know because there was a point in time when I didn't know how to properly use a trowel. And then I learned, and, I, and it was like revolutionary. You're working with the tool instead of against the tool. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanna show you. Uh, but this is kind of sort of, I don't know if it's ironic or funny because I'm not actually even using a trowel. <laughs> I'm using like a metal detector. Uh, That's from White's Electronics. Yeah, there you That's go. That's their super digger. That's the White's digger. But it actually, functions as a pretty nice trowel. So, oh yeah, it cuts the ground really well. Yeah, it's got the serrated, whatever. I mean, you don't really, you don't even really want to know. But I'm gonna show you how to use a trowel and, and it will revolutionize your gardening if you don't already know how to do this. So, you've got your spot where you're gonna, where you're gonna stick a nice, lovely, tender transplant. And before I knew how to use a trowel, what I would do is kind of go like this and the ground is falling back in and you're not digging a really great hole and this is so ineffective and not useful at all and you're working against the tool. Let me show you how to do it the right way. You stick your trowel in at an angle. So my arm is all the way stretched out with the point facing a little more towards me than the handle is. The handle is further back. Stick it in. Okay. Then you just pry it forwards like that and you've created this lovely hole and you didn't have to hack at the ground at all then you can stick your little tender transplant in and then just pull the trowel out keep your hand there smooth the dirt around the plant and look we did it we didn't have to hack at the ground perfect it was easy that's it that's it that's it that's how to use a trowel that's, how to use a trowel. that's awesome way
And it's raining again. It's just been raining and raining and raining. We went from not being able to hardly grow anything because it was so dry, to just pouring on a regular basis. It's very different. I gotta go pick those cucumbers, but I'm not gonna do it in the rain. Oh, what the heck, you guys want me to pick cucumbers in the rain? All right, I'll do it. Yeah, check that out. It's probably a couple of pounds there. We should go weigh it and find out. Uh, let's see. It's just a little over uh, two and a half pounds. So let's say it's two pounds worth. Not bad. So, for those of you that say this channel is a waste of time, that I don't know what I'm talking about. Now this is a small minority of you because most of you people are much smarter than this. However, there are a few people that come along and say, I can't get those moments of my life back. David the Good is not educational. He's not helpful. Wow. Let's just look back at what we just learned. We learned two things. We learned how to use a trowel and how to catch pneumonia, both in the same video. The case is closed. Thank you for watching. And until next time. May your thumbs always be green. I went to see David, David the Good. We listened to Portishead and drank spiced rum.